Good morning. This is Carrie Raber, the urban conservationist for the Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District with your conservation report. Stearns County has a long history of dairy production, and with that, agricultural land use has typically been pastures, alfalfa, and corn silage to, to support dairy herds. This rotation also sustained native and honeybee populations for honey, hundreds of years. As you may have observed, the diversity on the landscape is changing over to two predominant crops, corn and soybeans. This monoculture is creating a food desert for bees. Honeybees are fortunate being able to travel up to distances of five miles to forage for food, whereas many of the native bees travel much shorter distances, some as little as a couple hundred feet. So you can imagine as flowering plants disappear, so do many varieties of bees, especially native bees. You may be asking, why should I care about the fate of bees? Well, it's simple. Bees and other beneficial insects are responsible for pollinating more than 30% of the seed and fruit crops we all enjoy and depend on. Plus, the annual value of crops pollinated by wild native bees in the United States is estimated to be more than $3 billion. Include managed European honeybees in that estimate, and it skyrockets. For crops such as almonds, are 100% dependent on pollinating services of bees. It's estimated that the pollinating services provided by managed honeybees is worth $150 per acre, and their value continues to grow as their populations decline. While there's still much debate about the cause of pollinator loss, the solutions are simple, and they identify things we can all do. Number one, create habitat with pollinator zones where um, Habitat can be protected from disturbance in rural and urban landscapes. Incorporate plant species that bloom throughout the spring, summer, and fall. And don't forget to include flowering shrubs and trees, which are excellent forage sources in the early spring, benefiting our native pollinators like bumblebees. In addition to bloom periods, provide plants that have varying shapes and sizes to benefit the greatest number of bees and insects. If you adopt a cover crop, consider the use of buckwheat as part of the seed mix to offer valuable forage sources for bees. Number two, protect natural areas. Hedgerows, tree lines, grass waterways, and other natural features that provide important habitat. Honeybees are social, working collectively for the hive, whereas many native bees are solitary creatures, often living in exposed soil or in the cavities of dead plants and trees. Take a look at your yard or farm and identify areas that could provide habitat for pollinators. In these areas, consider leaving things in a natural state, plus it will reduce the maintenance on your part. And finally, number three, decrease pesticide use. Using integrated pest management, which includes cultural, chemical, and biological controls, is considered an important step in protecting pollinators. To address pollinator declines, a number of programs have been initiated locally all the way up to the national level. One program is a partnership the Stearns County SWCD has with General Mills. Now in its second year, this program is helping offset the cost to landowners who install pollinator habitat. Not only does it provide an incentive to establish the habitat, it recognizes the ecological value and awards participants $150 per acre for the pollinating services it provides. The Natural Resources Conservation Service, or NRCS, launched a new program this year benefiting man managed honeybees. The state of Minnesota also has put its hat in the ring, evaluating how state agencies can offer support for pollinators. This fall, the Board of Water and Soil Resources is releasing a pollinator toolbox providing the necessary information to support pollinators on your pro property. Also, the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, through their pesticide division, is looking to support landowners who want to create pollinator habitat. There's a lot of interest in sustaining the health of pollinators, which translates to opportunities for landowners. While many of these details are still being worked out, if you're interested in supporting pollinators on your property, give our office a call and we'll identify programs that work with your situation. Plus, we can help identify funding sources, uh, develop planting plans, and the appropriate species that benefit pollinators. Before I go, I have an announcement that may be of interest. Stearns and Candio counties have been awarded a cooperative weed management grant to help control and eradicate five invasive species. They are wild parsnip, leafy spurge, purple loosestripe, spotted knapweed, and common tansy. If you have any of the mentioned plants on your property, 
give our office or the county weed inspector a call to enlist technical and financial assistance to help control the spread of these invasive species. In parting, I came across this fun trivia fact. A 16-ounce jar of honey requires 1,152 bees to travel over 112,000 miles and visit 4.5 million flowers. So the next time you enjoy honey, think of the hardworking pollinators it takes to um, enjoy this uh, special um, service. For more information on any of the items highlighted today, please give us a call at 320-251-7800, extension 3, or visit our website at www.stearnscountyswcd.net or stop by the Wake Park USDA Service Center. Again, this is Carrie Raber for the Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District with your conservation report. Thanks for listening and have a wonderful day.